Bro, we are most certainly in the first inning, and it's getting ready to explode. Three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin price. CBDC. You think they're going to operate twenty four seven Sundays? You Europeans, dude, you love your bank holidays. Bitcoin is a better deal than owning Google, Nvidia, or Facebook. I'm going to make a lot of money, and then I'm going to reinvest this money in breaking the old system down, so that your kids and my kids in the future is better, cleaner, faster, more efficient. By twenty thirty five, we won't have a school system the way it looks today. Well. I'm doing it because you're not willing to, because you're a little baby, dude. You're so scared of your investment going bad that you won't stick your head out. I know people with 10,000 Bitcoin that are absolute assholes. They're not nice people, and they're not going to add any value to this future. I don't want to hold on to all this shit, dude. What for? I don't need a yacht. I don't need to be Mark Zuckerberg. If it's freedom money, it will be worth more than fucking Sailor put on. If you've ever played around with Mercury in the science labs at school, it kind of seeks the biggest hole in the ground, the lowest part of gravity. And I think that's what Bitcoin's going to do. It's going to act like an apex predator that looks for deep, deep margins. The euro is absolutely in the middle of being destroyed. This is a little different world than we were living in a year ago. All the rules are off. You think Visa's is feeling really comfortable about the Federal Reserve going direct or a government having a CBDC? Why the hell would you need Visa? Hi Gary, how are you doing? Everything Good, fine? Man. Good to see you. Uh, it's it's been it's been a crazy. I think what was it like half a year or something like that since we last recorded. Um, what was your uh, what was your some of your highlights uh, since we last spoke? I think like probably like last six months. Yeah, my my summer uh, I, I went bone fishing, uh, which is awesome. If you haven't been bone fishing, it's bugging awesome. <clears throat> went um, the next day. I went diving with my daughters. We, we got next to a few black tip sharks, which was pretty interesting. Not cages, like open water. It was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, and then just been working most of the, most of the summer. Uh, went to the Jackson Hole blockchain symposium that Scaramucci puts on every year. That was outstanding. Kraken put it on. And then of course Nashville happened. Uh, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a good summer. How about you? Yeah, it's a, I'm just basically in my podcast studio making podcasts. So <laughs> all my work is online. Um, really cool. Um, you you have been also, I think, publicly donating to, to Donald Trump, and uh, also like you spoke with him in, in the in, in the conference, which is really cool. Um, how is, was this the speech the speech of Donald Trump, and maybe also the speech of of RFK as they are now joined forces? Is That, did that uh, kind of triggered now the start of the nation state game theory that we are like a little bit waiting for, like the first major country that has been now entering Bitcoin? I mean, El Salvador we had before, but El Salvador is like so, 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 so small against the, the, the big ones. Um, could that trigger like a nation state game theory kind of event? Well, I think it already has. I mean, we saw instant reaction from both China and Russia. Uh, free loosening their approach on crypto. Um, and I think what happened this week with Telegram, uh, with the CEO of Telegram, really highlights the, the reason why Bitcoin is so important, self custody is important. Uh, and also having the battle that we are most certainly going to have over what are rights of human beings to move between countries. See, see, France is now showing us, oh, wow, wow, the whole world's changing now. People, like, what's going on in Brazil? Like, oh, wow, when did Brazil, who is Brazil acting on behalf of? That's my first question. Who and what are they trying to do? Because I don't remember a time in in recent history or any time that we're a uh, South American country grabbed Starlink assets for a shareholder in X and they're penalizing shareholders in two different companies to censor and control the behavior of X. So the game theory is already starting. Dude. The game theory is out of control right now. People are, politically responding, they're financially responding, the CBDCs are on steroids. Uh, 
And then you have the CBDC world, which is, I think, if you think through it very carefully, I like the CBDC. And the reason I like it is because you're pitting up the Fed uh, with J.P. Morgan Chase. I mean, why do we need Visa, MasterCard, J.P. Morgan Chase if the Fed's doing everything direct with their own banking? They just make their own fees. Let's let them go, dude. They're going to rip each other in shreds. Like the banks will hate this, okay? The, the, there's no reason for Bank of America. Uh, that, I'm, now I'm just buying CBDCs. This whole theory of, hey, I'm going to get you on a CBDC. I'm going to give you $1,000 a month, and you got to do all your... Okay, so let's say everybody goes there. But JP Morgan's going to freak out. And every middle value player, uh, why, why does anybody need Visa or MasterCard in that scenario? I think you will have some of the largest corporations yelling foul, because governments are now are trying to get involved with retail. I mean, you just start, it starts the whole supply chain, the way it's been constructed for 300 years is being obliterated. It's, it's, it's showing the stress of all this traffic, digital traffic on analog legacy rails needing to be touched everywhere. Reports here that, um, good luck. I, I think you're trying to launch a, 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 I think you're trying to use a Fred Flintstone car, the big old 400 ton stone car, and you're laying it right on top of the UK M25 going, okay, compete. Good luck. They're, CBDC, you think they're going to operate 24 seven Sundays? You Europeans, dude, you love your bank holidays. You ain't working on Saturdays, Sundays, and bank holidays. No, it's not going to happen unless you turn everything to automation, which gets us to the same point. We, we win this game, dude. We win this game. People just have to be like you brought up the donation. I've gotten a lot of heat for that. I've got heat for it from the Bitcoin community, which I was really surprised by because I'm like, hey, I could have done this right directly to Trump, dude. <laughs> And had and my family, my children would have known him. I did this through Bitcoin, specifically to send a message to the Bitcoiners. I mean, I met with Sailor right thirty minutes before that. Uh, he's like, "Hey, man, you know he can't do that. He cannot do that. He's a public company. He's smart to stay out of the politics, but a guy like me can do it." And it got me to the table with every miner and some of the major players in the space. I want to help this space grow. So I don't, I'm not interested in having a thousand Bitcoin, Robin, and never selling my Bitcoin. I'm going to make a lot of money and then I'm going to reinvest this money in breaking the old system down so that your kids and my kids in the future is better, cleaner, faster, more efficient, and that I have a chance of staying in the 1%. Because the truth is, we can say that the 1% is the bad deal, but in, in the bell curve, man, it's going to be a bell curve. There's going to be a bell curve for 8 billion people. 2% of them are going to be on the extreme edges of both of those, right? And then there's a whole, right now, you're in the middle of that bell curve. You're trying to get to the highest part of the food chain you possibly can get. This is evolution. It's, it's not, it's not abnormal this is what's abnormal is you have a food chain that's picking winners and losers and they're stopping guys like you from moving your way up the food chain because if they clip you on youtube see if you say something like i say they'll annihilate you right and that's why i'm also here because i actually think i'm going to get annihilated and you guys need to go hey that's uncool dude that cat was only here for education i've taken no money from anyone i don't intend on taking any money from anyone. And I'm saying this is a public utility, YouTube, Google, Facebook. I don't care. Dude. You guys are utilities now. This is my y'all through everybody in through COVID. You've betrayed every trust we could possibly have. You're a public utility. You can't charge Robin 33 cents for every dollar somebody sends in, 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 in a super chat. That's uncool, dude. That you pay Google 33 cents on the dollar or 45 cents on through the advertise, that is heinous.
That is massive dominant power, uh, anti-competitive. It's not helping the market grow. And it, it, th this is a world like you cannot, I cannot get education now like this without these platforms being available. And it should be available for 8 billion people and they should not be allowed to have a dominant position without opening all their pipes and all their systems and going, hey, look, we don't charge any more than anybody. You can't charge 33% when Visa is charging 3 and 3% is too much. And they're doing nothing. Okay, Google is not insuring the money. They're not banking the money. They're not paying you any interest. There's zero content that they provided. Simply a large highway they've built over the past 20 years. Clearly, I think we're getting ready to find out the every three letter agency in the United States have been involved with them in the last year. And none of their shareholders knew any of this and none of their users knew. And when you're a public company and you're engaged in felonies, I think it changes the entire game as to how this rolls out in the future. You, they're either going to have to be bifurcated into 10 different entities, which breaking these big companies up has never worked. Well, they all just collaborate together. It becomes more difficult to penalize them versus, hey, you guys are going on a public blockchain, dude, and you get to make this much and that's it. And you've made hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars in profits. The game's over. You cannot charge usury rates and block people's communication capacity and their, more importantly, their ability to learn. Because I'm going to build a school on this thing, dude. If they keep it open, I'm going to build a school here and the government's going to end up giving me part of the federal funding. I've already pitched this to the government. Uh, like, this is the way you do this, right? Um, hey, what's the federal uh, budget for education in the United States? 80 bill a year. Now, why federal government's involved in state education? I'm not sure, but let's just, we have this $80 billion number. I have a couple of wealthy friends that are in Bitcoin. Um, we would like 5%. Oh, oh, how do you grade the performance of the education? If I can get a congresswoman or a senator to go, it's an F. Then who, what government official is going to stop me if I come in with Michael Saylor and a couple of other guys? And go, hey, uh, there's a few billionaires here, and we want 5% of the 80 billion. That's $400 million. We want to use that as a test case. We're going to give you $400 million in Bitcoin to sit in a trust, and we're going to be held to performance metrics for our new school and the, and the budget, that part of the budget we take from you. We're going to measure our $400 million against the other 80 billion. Now, first thing is really cool. The other 80 billion has zero metrics by which they measure any of this. So immediately us just even having a metric, we win and we send a signal. You cannot give $80 billion out and not have metrics. Have no way of measuring whether that $80 billion is being spent well or not. This is a game we can win here, man. I mean, if really, this is, if you think about the logic of that, wow, they're saying it's an F. Why would you reinvest in an F? Huh? Why yeah, would you it. reinvest in an F when you have a guy over here going, hey, I'll compete with all of them. I'm going to put a politician in a position where they, they can't say no, man. Right? You just can't say no to that. It's like, wow, that's a great deal. Who do you know that wouldn't do that deal? I, I think people would... I think people would fund my business and go, I, most certainly, Gary, will hold a school that will out, uh, outdo, outrun in intelligence the results of every other school system. I don't think anybody, it's an F, can't do worse than an F. And I would also the, create the, the public school system in Austria with an F. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good. Um, what, what do you think is... is do we need a fundamental overhaul of the education system? Like it's, 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 it seems very 
um, it, it doesn't serve the purpose really good. It, it's it's like it it uh, puts out uh, good workers, but not really uh, any creative workers. Like it seems like it's it's made for like hundred years ago and not like for for today's world. At least from from my understanding. Um, what, what would you like completely overdo? Like why why even public uh, um, education system if there are so many great contents even out there with uh, with, uh, with YouTube and all the rest? I feel like we we don't even need them 100%. Maybe the basics with like reading and math and stuff like that. But beyond that, like we, we can learn ourselves to a, to a certain extent. Uh, I think by 2035, we won't have a school system the way it looks today. If you're sending your children to the school system in the future, you, you, you literally are just pushing them off into a prison. I, I think we just need to understand these are not schools. They are prisons. They are encampments for a whole system that places kids into an encampment from 8.30 to 5 so that the parents don't have to deal with it. And it's not my school teacher's jobs to teach my children discipline or ethics or morals. I, I don't have any interest in anyone talking to my children about morals or ethics or what they should or shouldn't believe in. If I want to do that, I'll send them to a counselor or a church. See, this is where schools have completely lost their way because they, one, they didn't do teaching very well. Now they're moving into telling people what they should and shouldn't think and how they should behave. And I didn't ask for any of that. Uh, but I do think that when you're living in this world and you're 30 and you have a baby, 40, 46 plus percent of babies or unplanned for. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Unplanned. People didn't get married and go, hey, let's go produce a baby and the baby's mission is going to be this. No, they had a baby. She gets pregnant. They get married. And then they wonder they don't have a plan. Because they didn't like actually, cre they didn't think, oh, we're going to manufacture a baby for the next 50, 100 years. And this baby's going to be a production member of society, a seedling that's going to turn into a mighty oak. Now, there's no mighty oaks, dude. Oh, don't go out in the rain. Oh, be careful. Like we have no mighty oaks whatsoever. Right. I, I could run a program for a thousand bucks a month. The women would probably pay me to send their men to it. How to become a fucking man. How to say yes and no versus, hmm, let me think about it. The, the people can't pull the trigger anymore. People are stunned by how quickly I came into this industry. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Once you study something like, why would you rethink it? And, oh, let me see about pulling the trigger. Uh, yeah, I'll get around to pulling the trigger next year. Uh, there comes a point in time when you go, what am I going to do? Am I lighting this fuse or not? Uh, it's, it's really sad, man. Um, and, and the funny thing is, the women don't want They don't. The, the women ask me, hey, where are all the real men at? I'm like, bro, I don't know. Don't ask me. I, ain't, I don't know where they are. I know they're not around you. That's for sure. Because uh, you're with me. I mean, it's, it's bizarre. Uh, we, we, it. like, I think there's need, there needs to be like a reckoning. Th this is why I think we're just going to have civil unrest. We're going to have a war. And uh, because I don't think you're ever going to get anybody to get off their couch until they have to. Guys like me were born off the couch. I like the action. But it's not normal for most people. They don't. Uh, I had a man here last night worth a couple hundred million dollars. He's like, dude, I, every time I'm driving down the road, you, 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 you pop up on LinkedIn. And I watch one of your videos. He's like, why are you doing all this? Right. And I'm like, one is anything I'm saying not true. He said, no, no, it's accurate as shit. He said, but you're a target now. I'm like, well, I'm doing it because you're not willing to. Because you're a little baby, dude. You're so scared of your investment going bad that you won't stick your head out. And I'm not going to live that way. Not a chance, man. Not a chance. I'm not going to go to my grave and somebody said, oh, wow, he knew and he copped out. It, it's it, That's not the way heroes are made. It's not the way a male 
is supposed to operate. Most certainly an alpha male does not operate this way. There's a reason we have that, you know, oh, alpha male. That, that not everybody's going to be the alpha male, man. It takes a special kind of like little thing. I, I don't know why I have it, but my brother has it. I mean, maybe we're scared to be something other than. Now, that, that doesn't mean that I always have to. I mean, if I'm with Donald Trump, dude, I'm, I, I don't think I'm the alpha male in that deal. I'm certain I'm not. Now, he's not a rude guy. I was with him one-on-one, dude, and I felt no intimidation from him whatsoever. That was the most fascinating thing. Two things. One, I was like, this guy's 6'3", and he doesn't feel like he's 6'3". I got no, I'm five seven, dude. I'm a small little guy. I've had blue blood Yale people look down their nose at me, and they're literally my size. But they're looking down their nose at me, okay? And I can feel it. With Trump, I was expecting to get that feeling that you see with him on TV, all red in the face, and just, you know, really, none of that. None of that. In fact, if you meet me in person, I have a similar thing. You see him on things like, ooh, he's aggressive. But when I, when you're around me, you're like, wow, the guy's really chilled out. So the TV, the camera does something to Trump. I can't explain it, but I will say he is massively different than he looks on TV. And the feeling I got from him, what, what, there was no intimidation, no seniority, no I'm better than you. Uh, and a very clear communicator, he listened to us for 45 minutes to an hour. We told him what we wanted. We told him what we thought the digital world needed. Uh, Went through a whole list of things. And uh, he looked at everybody and said, hey, if you guys get everybody to vote for me, I'll I'll deliver. I'm in. I'm in that. Uh, Get to hold him responsible later. Hey, dude, you said you were going to deliver. Like if he doesn't, he will deliver because it's good for everybody. Uh, Most certainly he's not going to stop it. I'm concerned about him doing the NFTs and getting a little too involved in the industry, quite frankly, but there would be worse things. I mean, I wouldn't do it. If I was him, I would advise, Hey, just stick to your knitting, but there's nothing wrong with an NFT. What's wrong with it is the way they've been running. Like I think I could run a token business on my own brand or your brand. Uh, you, you, I don't think, I don't know you very well, but I suspect you don't want to have a hit. You don't want to have it in the history books that Robin Sire uh, launched a token and you're the only one that walked away with any money and you're a scammer for the rest of your life. You just I don't, don't seem that. that kind of guy. Dude. Now I could launch a token for, I can't do it for node 40, but I could do it for this thing. And I'd be, I think it'd be a good investment for people. They get to buy a dollar stock in Cardone. Now if I die, okay, it goes to zero. Um, but I think some of these applications are going to take hold and 99% of them, like I know a lot of people that laughed at baseball cards and there are a few people that made a lot of money on baseball cards. So it doesn't make them wrong. We're going to have to accept a lot of changes in the future. I think a lot of change. I mean, a lot like it's just going to be totally different in 10 years. Uh, that, that's the other thing that, that, uh, so, sorry for interrupting me. That's the other thing that came out of the, uh, symposium in Wyoming. There is no longer this attitude of, Hey, uh, what's this token going to be worth tomorrow? This was, we're building for the next eight years. This project right here, we're thinking 2032. I'm like, Whoa, now this is pros. Okay. This is like, Oh, we're going to build an energy complex. We need 800 megawatts over there. We need 400 there. And that's going to happen by the year 2035. Once people start doing that, dude, this is the biggest money this planet has. I mean, these are the biggest players in the world. I've never been more bullish about this. Last time I talked to you, I was bullish. Oh, my God, our timing is perfect, right? I mean, really, really perfect. What do you expect, uh, as you said, you're bullish? What do you expect over the, I think... The bull run is usually around the next like 12 to 18 months. What do you expect for, for the next uh, couple of months, maybe like uh, 18 months? As- Can you bring up Sailor's uh, model? Sailor's model, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just bring up Sailor's model. I'm in. I'll take the low side. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he has, um, he has the model for like uh, when, uh, 2045, I think. Uh, 
49 million uh, Bitcoin. I, I love that a lot. Like, I think it's very realistic, uh, maybe even conservative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it will be a really uh, it will be a crazy uh, next few years. Like the next ten years, I guess, will be astronomical, interesting for everyone that is in the Bitcoin space. That's why I I, I don't know if you know that, but I committed myself to doing this what I do right now with an interview per day the next ten years. Like there's no wow. way I, I I cannot I I cannot do it the next ten years. Like there's like I can already fix it. I do it now in the first year, and my resources get better, my skills get better. I might can outsource things. So it's like uh, the next ten years will be extremely cool in Bitcoin. And so I'm like I, I will I will write that thing the next ten years. Maybe uh, Bitcoin is so adopted in ten years. Maybe Bitcoin is then boring because everyone has it. I don't know. Um, and there, are, there can also be other topics uh, around freedom, around building something. Like it doesn't have to be only Bitcoin. As like right now, we're also talking about a lot of other things. But I think that's really cool. What I also want to get from you is like when we talk about the Bitcoin community, um, sometimes I feel like uh, the Bitcoin community grew up a lot already, but I think we can still learn a lot uh, as, a, as a community to be brave, to be stand up, to be um, walking a little bit more with like, I, I feel sometimes we are hiding uh, <laughs> too much behind like our computer screens, behind our avatars, and we could be a little bit more brave and, and, and getting into things, as you said before. Uh, and at some point, uh, I, I see like we are also a little bit too toxic against some things where we're like, oh, we attack each other. I mean, it might also be a good thing because it, it, it keeps our knives sharp. <laughs> uh, it, it keeps, uh, it keeps in the uh, wide, uh, the, the mind uh, sharp. What do you think about the Bitcoin community as you came in really quickly? And I feel like you're really deep in now. You're in Nashville and you're a speaker and uh, you attend a lot of spaces. I see you're really active in the in the community, not just like official, but you're really like deep in the community. What's your what's your take on the Bitcoin community and uh, what, what would you tell Bitcoiners? Uh, I um, somebody made a comment to me and they're like, dude, you have navigated the extremes of Bitcoin uh, so well. And when they said that, I was like, it has been a, like, walking, you know, walking a tight wire. And walking a tight wire and also holding on to one's own ethics and viewpoint. I mean, I have attempted to be not massively offensive to anyone. This is, I'm coming into y'all's business. And it your industry. I didn't create this industry. I'm coming in. I'm quite happy that it's here. I'm not here to disrespect anyone. However, my investment now is of a level that uh, I don't care if you've been here 15 years. If you weren't smart enough to buy 10,000 Bitcoin at 300 bucks and then continue buying Bitcoin all the way up to 69, don't blame me. It's not my fault. But you better stay the fuck out of the, screwing the market up. The people that came in here early on, they have to admit, you know, most of them actually won a lottery ticket. And uh, cool. But a lottery ticket doesn't mean you're a business executor. It doesn't mean you're an industrialist. It doesn't mean you're a reformer or that you can restructure large industries in the way most of the Puritans in Bitcoin contemplated peer to peer in the white paper is very different than the way I interpreted it. Uh, what I think they misunderstood and missold was that we were going peer to peer and it was going to happen tomorrow morning and we were going to have real estate with fungibility trading in tokens tomorrow morning and Bitcoin was going to be at $8 million tomorrow morning. And the entire Fed was going to implode. The U.S. dollar would cease to exist. And peace and sanity would spread across the world as if Jesus reappeared. It's, it's just not real for me, okay? Bitcoin is not going to solve every world problem. I know people with 10,000 Bitcoin that are absolute assholes. They're not nice people. And they're not 
going to add any value to this future. They don't invest in anything. Uh, they're holding on. I will sell every one of my Bitcoin for sure. And you know why? Because I actually want to help the world. I don't want to hold on to all this shit, dude. What for? I don't need a yacht. I don't need to be Mark Zuckerberg, right? Who's probably going to die just like Steve Jobs, regretting what he did. I don't want to die with regrets, man. I want to be a, I want to be a freaking hero. I want to be somebody that's, oh, wow. He, you know what? He did a good job, man. He, he wasn't a prostitute. He wasn't like, no matter how much money he did or didn't have, like I should be able to speak my piece and help the world and not be worried about someone taking stuff from me. And so I think that, that uh, seems very, it, it has been toxic. Now I happen to believe that toxicity is already past its peak and we will only see improvement from here. We will see a more muted message from the early players because their voices are just simply no longer going to have any oxygen. It, it, it's just not even going to, it's, it's a throw a penny in a freaking ocean. Yes, it did make a ripple, but now some of the people will be really offended by that. Um, whatever. I, I, I'm just sharing the way I see this happening. The wallet business was destroyed on January the 11th, self-custody with ETF. Uh, the lending protocol market, hopefully for Bitcoin, is going to accelerate. It's in nascent stage because of the ETF. Um, but this whole, hey, you know, you can't be, you're not a good Bitcoiner if you're not holding everything on a seed phrase in your backyard uh, is, you know, really pretty hypocritical when you're literally running businesses and you call yourself a Bitcoin only guy and you're actually running businesses that has nothing to do with decentralization. It's, you know, one fucking affiliate trade behind another. And it's like, hey, you guys are no different than any of the other scammers. So there's, a, there's a lot of hypocrisy that's going on in this industry. Um, I'm stunned that we're at $1 trillion with the behavior. And actually very bullish. I was like, whoa, you got to a trillion dollars with all this stuff going on? Hmm. I'm pretty sure $10 trillion did six years. It 10x is Bitcoin, 10x is in six years. 10 trillion, it will absolutely be eight to $12 trillion size. Um, it makes so much sense to me that it would take up, it, it, assume it's a, a $800 trillion market. 10 trillion, <laughs> nothing, man. It's 8% of the market. Right now we're sub one, sub one, 2,516 billionaires. See, this is my math. I do all these power law guys and models, Giovanni. My, I, I listen to every one of them. I like them all. I think they're lovely people. Uh, everybody wants to be right. You know, you go through this part of your life where you want to be right. I just want to be rich and happy. Uh, happy and rich, by the way, I do it in that order. Uh, I have no interest in being right or first. Um, but you see, you see some of these people looking at this market when Cantor Fitzgerald shows up. Most people will never have heard of Cantor Fitzgerald, Howard Ludnick, and he's sitting in a room with his son and Trump's in the room. And we're talking about Bitcoin. Uh, bro, we are most certainly in the first inning. And it's getting ready to explode. Cantor Fitzgerald is a beast. Howard Ludnick is one of the great commercial champions of the planet. Uh, I know these guys because they helped me in the energy patch back in the day. And they were, I mean, I walked up to him and went, Howard, what the hell are you doing here? And he's like, dude, this is so much like nat gas and electricity. It's unbelievable. I'm like, exactly. It's exactly like it. So because we've been here before, we've seen these industries. Remember, nat gas and a power trade on 30-minute markets, man. That used to be 30-year markets. There's no credit lines. There's nothing. There's just, it's just a commodity market. Exxon Mobil is treated the same as me or you or Royal Dutch Shell. And that is cool, dude. Now, in the, in the crypto industry, you're like, ooh, the miners, they're already 42%. 
like, oh, we have too much consolidation. You're always going to have consolidation in mining and production and farming because the margins are shit. The margins are crap in that and growing things. This is why Sailor will not, Sailor not, doesn't ever buy mining companies. I look at the mining business and I'm like, why would you want to own that? When I can buy a Bitcoin for 60 grand, it, it, it makes no sense to me. Uh, there'll be a day maybe. Okay. And I say maybe there'll be a day, but not, I, I just don't need it. It does not need to be this complicated, but I most certainly think we get to 10 trill. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the BitBox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit BitBox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. It's interesting when we talk about um, there is this underlying of Sailor's model uh, is the work of um, Jesse Myers of, of Grosses. Like he is also always mentioned in, in uh, Michael Sailor's presentations. And I had him uh, really a short time, like, I think like one or two weeks ago, I had him on. Uh, and he basically has the thing of like, oh, there's $900 trillion worth of assets. Uh, and then we have to figure out like what's the percentage that Bitcoin will capture of that, and it's a question in my mind where I cannot wrap my head around it. And we 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 can get from like conservatively, oh, it will be like twenty ten to twenty percent uh, of the world's assets. Then there are the people that saying, look, Bitcoin is money. Money is fifty percent of everything, so fifty percent of the asset will be Bitcoin. Then there are crazy people that are saying like, oh, Bitcoin will be 99% of everything, uh, uh, which I have a hard, hard time seeing that, but uh, I'm open to everything. How, what, like not putting a timestamp on that, because I think the time is really hard to, to guess uh, when it will happen. But what do you think the full potential of, of Bitcoin is? Well, like how much of percentage of the net assets in the world uh, can can Bitcoin capture and why? Well, let's assume there's $800 trillion worth of assets. I think this is a number that's, who knows what it is, really. See, that's one of the problems. But $800 trillion would be absolutely the minimum uh, for something that's taken up 15 years and had no regulatory clarity, a bunch of idiots, LSD droppers uh, running the program, monster amount of tribes, tons of scams and crimes. And it's still at a trillion for it to 10 X from here with Howard Ludnick being here and JP Morgan chase and fidelity. Fidelity is just like getting ready to rock black rock. 
BlackRock's been here four and a half, five years. You have, uh, God, I always forget this lady's name. Um, big bank, old bank that's been in the space 12 years. Nobody even heard of. They had no clue they've been working on this. Cities given like massive amounts of money on the underlying pinning of some of these debt instruments that Sailor and others are buying. Uh, Ten trillion in six years, two years after Trump, I, I think that's doable, dude. And that's a what is that? That's a half three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin price, I think. Um, that's not the entire gold market, but I don't think the whole gold market is a money is a value market anyway. I think some of it's jewelry. Uh, doesn't even include the silver market. We, we've already exceeded silver. Also, um, I think we have to get through these comp The Bitcoin is a better deal than owning Google, NVIDIA, or Facebook. Google, NVIDIA, or Facebook's 10 trillion ish has no antitrust issues. All three of those companies are massive. Massive, massive, massive antitrust exposure. They have an address. They have a CEO. One of the CEOs of those three companies just admitted they committed felonies. Felonies. Okay. I, get, I know nobody wants to say the word, but like I am shocked that his board allowed him to do that. That was a long conversation. I guarantee it. That means that someone sent him a letter and said, we're getting ready to release a document on you. And he's like, ah, I need to get in front of him. Or he thinks Trump's going to be elected without a doubt. And he doesn't want to find himself in the piggy in the middle over there. Because there is shit going to hit the fan. This is why I say we will not have an election and Trump won't make it. Because I don't think the guys with all the skeletons they've been packing in these closets for eight years. I mean, I don't think that anyone's going to believe that Trump isn't going to like push an, push an investigation. Who shot me? Who shot Kennedy? Who shot the other Kennedy? Who shot Martin Luther King? Let's go ahead and reveal all that. He has to release that. Now, now I will not stand for that. Hey, dude, you were almost shot, dude. I'm not giving you any more money if I think you're going to get shot again. Let's find out who did all this shit, okay? Like, release it. Like, stop it. It's been almost 80 years, 70 years, right? So I think we all have a right to know what the hell is going on. Who's been running this country since I've been six years old, man? They've been killing people, killing visionaries, right? So I'm stunned that more people aren't talking about this. This just happened six weeks ago. And even the look on your face, you're like, man, this was supposed to be a Bitcoin conversation. You know, this is hard to die. Well, I know it is, but you know what? It just happened, dude. And we are literally not talking about it. Two massive pipelines were blown up two and a half years ago. No one's talking about it. We have an immigration issue all over the world that's out of control. Zero, dis zero attempt to assimilate anyone. No one's talking about it. So... I don't know what Bitcoin could be worth, dude. If it's freedom money, it will be worth more than fucking Sailor put on it. In what time period, who knows? Uh, I don't know. I know for sure we have never seen a product like this. Like, like the most compelling thing I could ever ask anyone is, have you ever seen anything truly finite? I, I would just like ask anyone that's listening to this, close your eyes and say, have I ever seen... Anything that's finite, a grain of sand, a star, a pencil, a job, money, is there anything? And I don't think human beings have ever confronted finite. And therefore, if they have not confronted finite, all they think of is an infinite universe of everything. Like, like it's just everything, everything all the time. And that's just not true. Okay? That's, that's inflationary. That's such an inflationary viewpoint. Um, value and money, uh, value and numbers are totally different. And I think we have a humanity that has gotten used to trying to price everything, right? Place a dollar value on it versus just value. Like I value you as a human being. I think you're one of the nicer people I have met in 
a while, right? And I'm like, okay, I stick you up in a little box on a shelf somewhere. Hey, I think Robin's legit. Now, if I do some research, maybe I put you too high up on the shelf. Maybe I, oh, he's involved with a bad person or get involved with the wrong chick. Dude, you can easily come down, follow down the list. I mean, really, this is what I tell founders and investors. I'm like, hey, those are bright guys, dude, but they're 24. I was with a guy the other night, 70-year-old guy. He's like, this is a great investment. I said, yeah, it is, dude, but your CEO is 24, your CTO is 26, and the, other, the chief marketing guy is 30, and he's full of shit. I said, none of these guys have girls, and like the moment they run into a redhead that's on fucking drugs, dude, that they happen to dig, all their genius goes to shit in handbasket. And he's like, that's so true, man. That's it. I said, that's why you need some older guys around. Right. Um, so the cool thing about Bitcoin is even if you don't think about the value, let's say it stays at a trillion. What else has happened around us? Because if that's true, the dollar isn't worth anything. And I don't think that's true. I think the dollar is going to maintain a very strong position on this planet for 10 years. Um, everything else might suffer. I mean, there's absolutely, the euro is absolutely in the middle of uh, being destroyed. The UK pound sterling might hang in there just because if they lose the pound sterling, they have lost their entire country. That, that island is done. Uh, and they're doing everything they can to turn that into a rat center. I mean, just a prison, prison island. It's freedom money, dude. Like, I, I, you know, it's exactly what all the people talk about in Bitcoin. It's like, hey, stop controlling where I can go. I mean, people are waking up today going, hey, what happens if uh, they decide that my passport's not valid? I thought I could travel freely. I thought with a blue passport, I didn't have to worry about what I said in about France. When I land in France, does that mean that I get held in France now? Whoa, this is a little different world than we were living in a year ago. I think all the all the rules are off. Man. All the rules are off, and, and I don't see them stopping this behavior. It seems like it's going to go critical, and that's why you, I really encourage people like you to do what you're doing. Is there, is there a fight on, on freedom and privacy and, and all those things? Like we talked about something truly finite. <laughs> Maybe freedom is, is a really finite <laughs> resource right now. Um, it's also interesting. I think last time we, we really spoke about freedom on, on an individual level. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting and very important conversation how to protect that freedom. Uh, protected freedom uh, f for yourself with maybe a plan B citizenship with uh, solid skills and, uh, and, and building businesses and uh, having also money that, that is permissionless as Bitcoin. Um, how, how do you go ahead? And, and if, if like someone young or like whoever, how, however old he is, uh, how do you protect uh, yourself against all those things? Like, If a Telegram CEO is, is held by friends like that, like he's, he's not a stupid guy. Like he's, he's bright and he's, is really good. Like how, how do we protect each other from, from that happening and on an individual level? I think we have to, uh, hope that Twitter, Rumble and these other social network platforms, these centralized platforms continue to allow us to use our decentralized tools, your computer this software, this microphone, everyone, please go to the used market, buy a microphone. Most cameras, most phone, uh, phones and computers have cameras in them. Plug them in and start talking about what you know to talk about. It, it, we cannot possibly have enough people like Robin doing this. I don't care if you're talking about sewing, uh, how to take care of yourself, health, mental health, There's a million things people need help with. There's a million things I need help with. Okay. Saturday afternoons, I run a show talking about IQ and the ability to pull the trigger. I don't talk about Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin's not the only thing to talk about here. There's so many cool. There's Sunday religions. Okay. Like open a damn church, man. I don't have one church I can go to that I really like because they all end up betraying me. Uh, open a church. 
Open a school for thinking. Open a school for reading. Read a book. to. I don't care. The more people we have doing this, they can't stop us all. Okay, this is really threatening to a centralized authority who's been used to running everything. And I don't need the centralized authority. I don't need to pay for them. If I do pay for a centralized authority, I'd like them to be able to act as they're centralized act as if they're a hub and th th they can't just change the rules on everyone. Right. And, and if it's a public company, then make it behave like a public company, which is transparency. Okay. I have no interest in sitting on site on a platform unless I know, Oh wow. You guys are actually coordinating with the FBI, the CIA, the IRS, the DEA, NSA, and what about the French intelligence or the Jewish intelligence? Oh, I didn't realize that. Can I have my money back, please? And all my data. I didn't know you guys were doing all this. No one told me that. It's a different game, man. When you're a public company, you can't do this shit. So we need people to stand up. I think you need, you need to be a little angry, quite frankly, on what's going on. This is not going to improve. Okay, it never improves. When you're dealing with psychopaths, they don't stop. Okay, they will literally eat themselves before they stop. So let's let them eat themselves. And that means we have to, you, you can only put one French CEO in jail, in a French jail, one at a time. You can't do 500 of us, man. That's why it's so important to, to, to step up here. Yeah. You know, I'm going to say that freedom has been a little too cheap for us. Since you've been born, no one's paid anything for freedom. The first time you have ever heard, hey, freedom is not free, was when you met me. Wow. You're 30 years old. You never heard that, right? But it's true. As soon as you said it, you're like, whoa, that's for sure, dude. It might be free for 10 years. It might be free for 40 years. You might not pay anything for it until that fucking one moment, man. Oops. I paid so little in the last 30 years, it's really expensive now. I just got thrown in jail. I, 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 have, I have, the legal system is so outrageous today that I have a California law firm who has one human being sign a document and they keep at, they're, they're filing class action RICO filings against us for something that happened seven, eight years ago. And I've never even dealt with a consumer. H how do you have a class action if you've never dealt with a consumer? But because the current administration is so litigious, they're litigious on those they want to bother. They're using regulation as an enforcement whip while they're not even noticing FTX, not even noticing the Celsius bullshit, right? And I'm like, hey, maybe you guys don't have enough people or maybe you're focused on the wrong targets. But when you can have lawyers filing lawsuits and then asking people, excuse me, uh, Mr. Cordon, uh, are you a large Bitcoin holder? And this incident doesn't have anything to do with Bitcoin. Nothing. It has something to do with the credit card industry, right? Uh, Mr. Cordon, are you a large donor to the Trump administration? First two questions in a deposition. Wasting my $2,000 an hour in legal fees? How do they even ask these questions? Man? It has nothing to do with that case. It'd be like, hey, what's your religion? Okay. I've had lawyers look at me and go, eight years ago, six years ago, don't, do not mention Bitcoin. Why? Don't, don't do it, Gary. Don't, and don't be naive. This is an ex-FTC lawyer who now works in the private sector. And he, she's looking at me going, I'm like, hey, I hired you because I thought you knew the inside intel. She said, I do know the inside baseball. Don't talk to them about Bitcoin. They will fucking discriminate against you. Wow, really? Whoa. Seriously. Oh, and if you talk about Trump, they're going to fuck you, bro. This is the world we live in today. So... I'm just trying to, I had a man last night ask me why I'm being so transparent with everyone. Because if it can happen to me, dude, it can happen to you. They tried to shoot Trump and the Telegram CEO, who's worth billions of dollars sitting in fucking France, can't leave after being invited to France for dinner by the president. So if you don't think this world is set up 
to grind your little people down into nothing, guarantee you that's where we're headed if we don't fight. And all we're doing is fighting. All we're doing is what your mom did. Stand up for yourself. Nobody said, mommy, a good mommy never said, oh, wait for Kamala Harris or the UK government to stand up for you. A good mother never told you that. Stand up for your own damn self. You have blood in your veins. Your parents gave it to you. At some point in their lineage, lineage, they had to fight for their freedom. And you have never one day had a fight for your freedom. It just might be time. It might be, um, might, might, maybe the, the time comes when like really CBDCs come out. Like uh, you said, mentioned in the beginning, you, you, you think like they are really steamrolling ahead. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting in the EU and I'm a little bit uh, jealous of, of, of America because they're like, they have a way more skeptic approach to, to the CBDCs in the EU. They're really like pushing the digital euro, which is the CBDC um, really ahead. Is, is that like, is, <laughs> do, do we have now that choice of like complete dystopia and then this, the CBDC route or like this, this freedom mind and this, this Bitcoin route? Uh, I feel like CBDC could be really damaging to, to, to our freedom and we have to fight. It's also to, to fighting is also really interesting. Um, one more thing that I want to mention. I see like someone asked me today in a, in a podcast where I was the guest. Yeah. He, he said to me, like, uh, do you think we, we can have a war because of Bitcoin? And I was like, there might be, but we are already in a war. Like we are in a, in an information warfare already. Like the content creators, the educators uh, as yourself, we are like soldiers uh, trying to get the, the, the orange light, <laughs> the orange hair of Trump and the orange light of Bitcoin uh, out there. And it's really Im Im important to, to do that. Um, do, do you see CBCs as a, as a threat and, and how, How, how should we how, how should we fight against that? Well, I think if you have a hundred, yeah, there's 108 countries as I know uh, working on CBDC. So we have 108 guys that are going to compete with each other. That's good. I dig it. I love competition. So all you need is two or three of them to break ranks. Um, this is the problem with an oligopoly. All you need is two or three of them break ranks. They have more pressure than, like, by the way, Mark Zuckerberg pointing fingers to the Biden saying, hey, you guys made me do this. That is breaking serious ranks. So if you don't think that this is why I brought the CBDC up, you think Visa is feeling really comfortable about the Federal Reserve going direct or a government having a CBDC? Why the hell would you need Visa? Why? Visa stock price should get crushed the moment the Fed goes direct. They don't need any of these middlemen. FIS, WorldPay, Fiserv, all these vendors in the middle that look like banks. We have literally been calling them banks, not banks. Visa is not a bank. Visa is a freaking duopoly that controls 76% of all the credit card processing in the United States and Europe has massive leakage, 13% leakage declines, 600 million chargeback disputes, $7 trillion in fees in the United States from fees and fines, little tiny little massive inefficiency, 62,000 people in between the United States. And I pitched this to MasterCard once. I said, you know, there's 62,000 dispute managers, people that file disputes and handle chargeback claims across all of Europe and America. 62,000, that's 6 billion in overhead every year. 60 billion in 10 years. Who's paying for that? You're paying for it, bro. You're paying for Barclays issuing to file chargebacks against Barclays merchant acquiring business. Two divisions, two different people, two different P&Ls. One gets a bonus. Probably they both get bonuses. That is vastly inefficient, okay? 62,000 people and all of them are amateurs. Not one of them have overall view into the entire chargeback scheme, including Visa and MasterCard. They only see their own little problem. So none of those companies should be involved. They have way too much bias. They have a P&L protect. This is why this problem never gets better. 
Visa and MasterCard have invested close to $5 billion in fraud firms in the last 10 years. Fraud has done this, dude. Okay. Internet, internet growth has done this. Uh, fraud, as they claim it, has literally outstripped the CAGR of internet growth and the, and the investments made by MasterCard and Visa in fraud solutions. That tells me, oh, wow. You guys aren't investing in fraud solutions. You're investing in fraud fee structures. You're generating income streams. Go find, go try to find out from Visa and MasterCard how much money they made from fees and fines last year. Can't find it, dude. It's in the billions and you cannot find it. It's in public companies. You cannot find that data. You cannot even find how much destruction there is in the credit card industry. The 600 million chargebacks, can't find that data. That tells me there's obscurity somewhere. And every time there's obscurity or there's blackouts or you can't find data, someone is making money when they should not be. And that's the cool thing about crypto. I think, I think Bitcoin is just going to be this, like this mercury. You know, if you've ever played around with mercury in the science labs at school, it kind of seeks the biggest hole in the ground, the uh, lowest part of gravity. And I think that's what Bitcoin's going to do. It's going to, it's going to act like an apex predator that looks for deep, deep margins, like 800 basis points on a digital transaction or 800 basis points. That's 8%, by the way, on a gambling transaction or buying a game or, oh, this Google thing, taking 100 bucks for every 300 you get, uh, that's going to get Dude, don't send me money on Google. I've told everyone, don't send it to me. Here's my cash app. Here's my BTC wallet. Here's my ETH wallet. Dude, do not give Google any money. We must start realizing that we have been funding the enemy. The best thing everybody on listening to this can do is go through your list of stuff in your checking account in your bank and ask yourself next to each one, is this an enemy? Is this an enemy? Is this an enemy? Ooh, look at this guy. Ooh, I don't, I'm not going to do business with Costco anymore. Costco asked me to put a mask on very rudely, stand in line six feet away from the next guy. And my membership card no longer gave me priority. I had to do, I had to jump through all these hoops. Fuck you, Costco. Okay, that's, that's $1,200 a month, every month for 10 years. That's 12 grand a year, dude. That's $120,000 from one player. I have never, ever stepped foot in Costco. Will never, ever step foot in Costco. Who benefited from COVID? Fucking Costco. Okay. Okay. So so anybody that was slamming me into a position. Oh, AMC. I got to wear a, a mask to go watch a movie. Fuck off. No chance, dude. Oh, Netflix. You promoted this stuff? Oh, you Facebook promoted this? I'm out. Disconnect. No more payments. Uh, Taco Bell, you, you behaved us. I'm out, dude. Okay, I'm done. Uh, like I, I'll spend money with you. If people looked at the amount of money they're spending with their enemy and realized the amount of money you don't support the people that actually are helpful, it's two cents. It's literally two cents, right? So just because it's convenient to pay these people do, doesn't make it right. That's, that's an interesting... Like, because I think we uh, end up like uh, supporting a lot of things that we actually are against uh, totally, when, when, when we when we look at the, the hard facts, because like, yeah, you, you look that, you look that. I mean, with like supermarkets and stuff like that, it's really hard because, for example, in, in, in the COVID era, like all the supermarkets in Austria play this game. So it's it's like, well, where do I get my, my supermarket stuff? <laughs> like I, I basically have to uh, support one of them. Uh, I can maybe search for like, who was the, the, the best player out of <laughs> out of them. Uh, but it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I feel like we are in an um, important time where we, we have to fight. Um, one thing that I, I want to get in, because you said in the, in the beginning, the, the, the OGs kind of won the lottery ticket. And I see it also like that. And uh, when when you have now people getting in Bitcoin and we see the, the things that might uh, come in the next years, we m 
we, we maybe have also people that win lotteries with Bitcoin in the future. They're just like, ah, oh, they're in because someone told them, they forgot about it. 10 years later, they find out about it. Um, what, what do you have as, as tips for either those who are already have won the lottery, but did not really like work towards it, but they like <laughs> invested, forgot the wallet, then found it again. And all of a the sudden they are millionaires uh, or maybe even more than that. Um, and maybe those who are generated, like w what advice as someone who worked uh, towards uh, uh, that, that uh, net worth, what advice do we have for those people that all of a sudden got rich because of, of Bitcoin? Well, if you won a lottery, I think uh, acknowledging that you won the lottery w is really good. And if you don't know if you won the lottery, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. I know enough of these guys now that have been around 12 and 15 years. I'm no longer a threat to anyone here. I think people have said, hey, this guy's like, you know, he's putting real money. I'm, one, you can't say I'm not a small player anymore, but I'm also like building companies in the space. Um, so it's just not going to hold water. Every industry I've ever been in, I have actually made more contributions than I've taken, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be the future. This point that we were just making, which was fighting back, that your freedom, like you're looking at this going, hey, I would really be much more comfortable in Florida than I am in Austria. That's what I heard you just say. I, I agree with you, dude. Uh, one of the things that I would do is I would start investigating hydroponics and other uh, ways to grow your own food with the community around you. Doing this single-handedly is not really that good. It's not scalable. So, but doing it in villages is really cool. And they're gonna have a hard time stopping a plant, you know, a plantation um, food growing if it's a group of people. Now they could come in and find you and find one little one roach in your kitchen and go, oh, that's a violation of Code Thirty Seven Part B. If you won the lottery, though, ag agree that it was a lottery ticket you won. Just because you made a bunch of money one time does not mean that you can make it twice. Most people cannot make it twice. The odds of being a great entrepreneur are less than being, me being an NBA basketball player at 66, five foot seven, 155 pounds. There's no chance of me being a basketball player. The truth is it would be easier for me to be a basketball player than an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. It's okay if you want a lottery ticket, but don't confuse yourself with being a genius. I can't tell you how many people made $300 million in Bitcoin, sold it at 7000 then decided they were going to build a wallet. They were going to go peer to peer in South Africa and generate trillions of dollars, and they're still working on that project while it's taking more and more money because they don't know anything about building a business, man. These businesses, like my Node 40 business, it takes millions to get it into a position where, okay, now we're going to rock and roll. Bitcoin's going from 3000 to 60000 They just lost a 20x, dude. While their private equity company, their idea went to shit, and they don't, can't even monetize anything. So one, if you made a bunch of money from one area, don't start thinking about I need to go do something else. That is ridiculous. Stay where you made the money. Like, why would you do that? Especially you don't have any skills. And just because you have a bunch of money and somebody comes to you and go, hey, can you invest in my little thing? Doesn't make it a good investment. I never invest with friends. Okay. I invest with high quality players who have a scalable idea. Uh, so if you're really, dude, I would find some advisors, okay? Like I would find some people that, okay, you're going to pay them to give you some really cool information and not fuck it up. I mean, I have a couple of people that call me and they're like, they show me their wallets, dude. They don't know what to do with it. It's so much money. They have no idea what to do with it. And many of them, sadly for them, broke so many common rules that they're scared to introduce it to anyone. They're so sitting on $600 million, dude, and they're like, uh, I need a lawyer, but I really don't need a lawyer because I did some shit that's really bad. I haven't paid any taxes. And they're in this weird box. So because 
they underestimated the opportunity. And you, Michael Saylor and I are not going to end up in trouble over this trade. Now, we may be uh, – I may be handled for something, but over this thing, I'm pretty sure that the guys that are coming in today, we're not violating any rules, dude. We're, we're paying our taxes. We understand the tax rules and the code. And we never went into this thing going, hey, this is an anonymous product and I don't ever have to pay capital gains, which less than 1 million people have paid capital gains on crypto out of the 52 million. You want to know why the government's pissed off? Less than 1 million people in the United States pay taxes out of the 52 million that check the box. It's, 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 it's like, hey, that's bullshit. So, and they're going to come after you. Guess what they're going to come after you? Not tax evasion, fraud, criminal fraud. They're going to come hard, man. Uh, so I would clean up your act, find some really good advisors, spend money on legal things, get a piece of software called Node40. It's a company I own roughly half of. But Node 40, people do not understand this. When you get a letter from these agencies, I don't care what country you're in, you got to answer them. And when you answer them, you got to have a lawyer. And how long those lawyers' letters and how much investigation and due diligence, if your lawyer is not a digital expert and he doesn't have the tools, you're going to get feed to death. I have a client, I have a friend of mine that's literally paying 650000 a month in legal fees over a $3 million audit, seven months. He's already spent more money in legal fees. Can't stop it though. As long as the other side has a question to ask, you have a lawyer on your payroll and then you have an auditor and then you have a forensics audit and then you have an expert, an opinion expert. They charge you just, and you can't stop it unless you just go, Hey, I surrender. Can't pay anymore, which is what's happening. That's why I said me and Sailor won't get in trouble because we'll continue to fund. We didn't do anything, dude. We didn't do anything we can write. This is something that this government needs to do. I'm going to just share this with you because I think it's a brilliant idea. And the reason I paid to get access to the next administration, pray to God. We need a rule that no government and no private lawyer, since our legal system is so fucked up, if you sue someone, including the U.S. government, and you lose the case, you should pay all the fees. If you file a lawsuit against someone and stretch them, so really fuck with them, and you lose the case, pay all the fees. That would stop half the lawsuits, man. It would stop half the consignment deals. This class action against me, there's no, in, there's no one that's paying them. It's the lawyers that are trying to take the commission, 60, 70 percent of whatever they get. Like if they thought that they were going to have to cover all my expenses, this would get settled much quicker. Instead, I'm going to have to spend three, four, five million dollars, however long it takes to prove they're wrong. And all it's done is crush my innovation. It's it's crushed my desire to even do any business here. Like, I don't need to employ 600 people, dude. I can buy Bitcoin all day long. I got 26 people in New York. Fuck it. I won't employ them either. Okay? I'll just buy Bitcoin if you guys. It's stunning. You're penalizing people that actually hire people. And it's the independents, man. It's guys like me that employ all the people. ExxonMobil doesn't employ you. You can't get a job with Chevron or Visa, dude. You can get a job with me tomorrow. Right. But I don't want you because you're just going to be too much trouble now. Because I got look at this. I get this report the other day. You know, I share all this stuff with the young guys because I wasn't expecting this. Right? But I saw you looking at the clock. If we need to go, you let me know. But look, look at this. This is a this is time sensitive. man. It's like, oh, it's an emergency. Mandatory FinCEN filing card one enterprises. Must pay by 1231, 2024. This looks like, I mean, this looks like I'm in trouble. $500 penalty per day after 1231, 2024. I didn't even know I own this company. Okay. I'm going to get 15 of these, dude. When did this start happening? Okay. 
when did this start happening? This is like, I feel like I'm living in Germany in 1940. Man, that's the, the that's sad. Uh, penalizing people that bring the, the country forward and, uh, and not uh, not incentivizing them, but actually punish them for, for doing something great. Yeah, as you said, like the time is already uh, past one hour, but it, it, it's always great to speak with you. We have the end routine that uh, we always have. Uh, the last time we also did it, uh, where the previous guest is asking one question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And I think it's uh, a really, really, really suiting one for you. Um, the question from the previous guest to you is, what is the most important educational value for you to be sovereign? To be solvent? Uh, or sovereign. 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 Yeah. So free. The best educational value. I, th I, think, I think studying history, because um, what I wanted to say was I, I get upset with my daughters every now and then because I hear stuff that goes on at school. And I said, hey, uh, have you ever thought about saying, hey, I totally disagree with that. That's ridiculous. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't do that. Well, you should do it. You should be argumentative with people and, and build an ability to confront anyone, anytime, including me, uh, on what their thesis is. Ask people what they believe in and challenge it. Okay? But really... Ask yourself what you believe in. I, I don't think anybody actually sits down and says, what the fuck do I believe in? Sorry to use the language, but like these are really important things and they're taken so casually. They spend more time and energy on figuring out what college they're going to go to, dude, than who am I really? Who do I want to be? And why the hell was I put on this planet? What am I doing here? I see 80% of the people going to work hating what they do. That's not a cool way to live, man. So to me, that's the, the, the inner work. If I'm criticizing constantly, I probably should look at what the hell I'm doing to create part of the problem. If, we, if I have so many things to fix in myself, I fix myself first and then I get to start judging you. And helping you change. Until then, I should not say anything to anyone. Just mind my own business and try to create value and surround myself with people that expect more of me than I expect of myself. That if you do those two things, man, you've done a lot. So that's what I would say, Robin. I guess you're going to ask me uh, what question do I have for the next guest? Yes, I do. What I'm going to ask the same question I thought I asked you last time. Hey, how do you define freedom? Yeah, that, that was the, the, the question you, you told me I, I should ask it to every guest uh, uh, following. I did not ask it every guest, but I actually asked it now, I think like every fourth or fifth guest, because like, what is freedom? How do you define freedom? And it actually came up more times, like I think... Uh, 10 guests or so ago, it was all like, hey, can you ask the next guest what, what does freedom actually mean? Like, what, what does freedom mean to you? Uh, it's an it's a really uh, important question and I will take it to the next guest again, really. So, perfect. Uh, thank you, Gary, so much for being on again. Uh, thank you, sir. It's, it's been a pleasure with you. And also, thank you for everyone joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. You guys follow this guy. He's awesome. Ciao. <laughs> thank you.